Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we are updating you guys on the current hurricane season of 2020. Now, before we get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I would also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page, where we just updated a little bit of the winter forecast, actually. We gave a little bit of a guidance outlook for the current sea surface temperatures. You can check out that very exciting post in the pinned comment down below, or the description down below below if you become a patron today. Also, I'd ask that you join our very exciting Discord server and Facebook group communities. They're also in the same locations. Now, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, what letter do you think we will end on as far as Tropical Storm named storms? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, let's get into this video, and we're taking a look at all of our storms so far. And this is important because it kind of shows us the trends so far this year. And as you can see, actually, the kind of the southeast coast has been the most active so far this year. I don't think that'll continue because that's almost never the case as far as being the, the most active area in the entire United States. Outside of that, the main development region, we do see a lot of activity coming from the more southern regions there of our Atlantic Ocean and kind of creeping in through the southern Caribbean like we saw uh, Gonzalo do and also Isaias. So both of those storms take, took that same track pretty close together. We've seen the Gulf be a little bit active. We've seen three storms so far. Uh, but I expect that both of those areas are going to become a lot more active as we move on, obviously. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at kind of a graph that's also going to show us all of our storms so far this year. And then we're going to start talking about our sea surface temperatures and how they've developed since the last time I've updated you guys on this. So here's a graph with all of our storms so far. As you can see, we've had Arthur and Bertha there in the month of May. So already kind of off to an early start having two May tropical storms. Some years you go without any May tropical storms. And then we had two in the month of June as well, Cristobal and Dolly. So there we have four before the start of July, which is already like, I mean, that is craziness right there. You guys probably don't even know if you don't keep up with kind of the typical weather trends. But I mean, this is out of control. Then we had four more storms in July, which is, well, actually uh, five because Isaias started out in July. So man, uh, by time we were, were starting out August, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine tropical storms, named storms to begin the month of August. And then we've had two category one hurricanes, absolutely out of control. The peak isn't until early September. So we have all of August, all of September, pretty much near peak conditions. And then a lot of October is pretty much supposed to be more active than July is at all. I think we're easily going to slam some records this year as far as named storms. It's going to be wild and very active. There's going to be a lot of streaks where I'm going to be making tons of tropical videos just like a couple weeks ago. It's going to be crazy. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to move on. And what we're going to do is we're going to move on and start taking a look at the sea surface temperatures. Take a look at some graphs that are going to tell us what's going on out there in most of the Atlantic. Now, first things first, here's just an entire world view of the sea surface temperature anomalies. As you can see, that blue area in the Pacific, that's our La Nina that is further developing. It has been doing a nice job lately and is looking better and better every day. Uh, and that's usually an indicator that we're going to have a tropical season where tropical storms are going to have a much easier time developing. Usually that reduces the amount of shear we see enter the Atlantic. So that's just kind of a key factor into our hurricane season. Also, most of the Gulf, Caribbean, East Coast, and main development region there, which is the area in between the Caribbean and Africa, are all in the above average temperature column. Everywhere basically except for where Isaias tracked, usually we see these storms cool down the, the waters underneath them. So we've seen that occur. The Gulf has done the most warming recently, and it's pretty impressive actually because it was cooler than normal just a while back. Let's take a look at a graph here, and this is our Nino 3.4 index. This is pretty much how we measure that El Nino or La Nina. Uh, and you can see it's just pretty much been on, on a dive since about July 24th. It's gone from a little bit positive to negative 0.4 degrees Celsius there, which is nearing weak La Nina status. So this one has been doing a very nice job developing. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the Atlantic MDR, or main development region here. And you can see it's just as positive as always. It's been positive since about July 10th. So we've been seeing this one uh, creep up. 
and down a little bit, but it's at about positive 0.5, I would say, which is nice to say the least. That's going to help these storms develop uh, tremendously, having those very warm sea surface temperatures underneath them. That's why we've seen a lot of storms so far this year because it's been so above average out there so far this year. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, take a look at the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean in the same fashion, and then we're going to take a look at our velocity potential anomaly. And what that is, is the sinking and the rising air motion and take a look at why I think a very, very active period is coming up. All right, so here's our Gulf of Mexico. As you can see, it actually went negative after Hannah occurred. Very typical. The Gulf isn't that large, so it only takes one or two storms to really cool down that area. Uh, but it has come back quite nicely to almost as warm as it has ever been. Uh, it's at positive 0.592 there as of July or August 7th. So we've gotten a reading today so far. It is going up by about, I would say, uh, 0.1 degrees every single day for the last week or so. So it's been doing a nice job of developing further there. Let's take a look at the Caribbean, and this one is just as warm as always, just like the Gulf. So these areas uh, really close to the United States are concerning because they are really rising in the sea surface temperatures, which again just helps these storms tremendously develop. So even if they're a tropical storm or a Category 1 entering the Gulf, they're going to have an easy time developing into a Category 2, 3, 4, like no time. Kind of like what we saw with Michael, these storms can develop very quickly in these areas. Uh, or Dorian in the Caribbean. Not saying we're going to have storms that bad. I'm just saying that that's examples of how quickly these storms can develop in these regions. Those storms develop basically overnight from very weak storms to very strong storms. And we could see similar rapid intensification because of these very warm sea surface temperatures. Let's go ahead and move on. And what we're going to do is we're going to move on to the rising and sinking air motion. Believe it or not, we've been in a sinking air motion for a few weeks now, actually. These Hurricanes that we've seen recently, Hannah and Isaias, have both developed in sinking air phases. So that's how warm these sea surface temperatures are. They completely ignored the shear that was in the area. They completely overcame all of the dry air and the sinking air motion because of how warm those sea surface temperatures are. So now imagine with the La Nina developing less shear, we're seeing the sea surface temperatures rise. So even warmer sea surface temperatures and this is August 7th, we see sinking air, but by the time we're at August 9th, imagine rising air motion in the area as well. All of those things coming together perfectly is going to be terrifying because these storms are going to have nothing that can hold them back. And this is why I think we're going to have a historically active late August, possibly early September, although we can't really see into September yet, very accurately at least. Uh, but so far, we're so far into the named storms list that it's not going to take a lot for us to break those records of, as far as named storms. Hurricanes and major hurricanes is a different story because we've only had two hurricanes. Lots of other seasons have had much more major hurricanes and hurricanes to this point, including 2005 especially. So I think named storms is going to be, the, for the most part, the easiest one for us to break a record at this year. Uh, which is good news because they're less damaging storms, but we still get to break a record, which is interesting. Here's by August 14th. Look at that. Rising air motion just blows up into the dark greens. So imagine by mid-August, pretty much some of the most active times in the hurricane season, we have those massively above normal sea surface temperatures. And with the developing La Nina, we're going to have a reduced amount of shear. And then dust is going to play a factor. Are we going to see less dust or more dust? If we see less dust, look look out. These storms are going to have absolutely nothing to hold them back, and we're going to expect to see a few hurricanes and possibly some major hurricanes as well during the mid to late August time frame. I am absolutely looking out for this time frame. I have it dated on my calendar. It's going to be extremely active. What we're going to do is we're just going to move on towards August 18th, the 23rd, and then we're going to take a look at our hurricane season outlook, our most recent one. So here's the 18th here, and as you can see, it just stays green. It actually gets greener into the MDR, the main development region. The earlier these storms start developing, the easier time they're going to have de developing throughout the entire track into the Gulf, up the East Coast, into Mexico, wherever they go. Uh, they're going to have a much easier time developing if they develop earlier on. So these rising air motions creeping towards the east there, towards Africa, uh, is going to just encourage more long-lived storms that start out in the main development region there. These darker greens are especially concerning because that just means easier and easier 
conditions for these storms to develop. We saw extremely dark greens there for around August 14th through 15th. So I'm really looking out for that time period. Uh, it looks extremely active, but still by the 18th, we see some very dark greens. And then by the time we're at August 23rd, so we've seen a solid uh, maybe nine days here of greens. You can see we still have the greens. We have a little bit of a sinking air motion, a little dot there in a part of the main development region. Don't really know what that is about, but overall, most of the Atlantic is still in a rising air motion. And that's the end of the run, guys. So I have no idea how long this is going to last. I'm guessing at least through the beginning of September, we will still see rising air motion. Uh, just because it would only take about a week more. So we're really going to need to watch the, I would say the 14th, maybe even earlier. I would maybe say the 10th through the 1st of September. August is going to be a very active month, it appears. Uh, we already have a 10% chance of development as of today. I just saw that pop up on my phone. Although I don't really know how much of a chance that one has of developing. We might need to wait for later invests to show up. But either way, it is going to get extremely active. And I'm going to focus on making other videos in the meantime until we see a tropical disturbance because I know it might be a long time before we can make something other than a tropical update uh, coming up very, very soon. All right, now here is our hurricane season overall forecast. This is our most recent one. I've showed this multiple times, but just in case any of you haven't seen this, I'm showing it. Uh, we see in the main development region... We see that tropical waves will have a much easier time developing. I still feel the same way. In this red area, rapid development could see many storms become major hurricanes in this region. Still feel the same way. The purple or magenta area is a wild card. I still kind of feel the same way, except this seems to be a more active area than I first anticipated. And then we can see for the Gulf of Mexico, near normal development, but most storms could already be major. Although I don't think it'll be near normal development. I think it'll be much above normal development because at the time I made this map, we had around normal or below normal sea surface temperatures in the Gulf. And now we have far above normal sea surface temperatures in the Gulf. So you can go ahead and extend that red area straight into the Gulf. Uh, no need for that pink area. It is going to be pretty much rapid development potential for the Gulf, the Caribbean, maybe even a little bit up the southeast coast, just because of how, I would say, how ripened these conditions are for a storm to just come through. Uh, it is really setting up to be a big year. Let's go ahead and look at our numbers forecast, the 2020 forecast. The uh, NOAA has updated their numbers. Uh, we've also seen Colorado State University update their numbers. So this is my numbers that I've had since the beginning of the season, and I don't feel a need to change it. So first off, starting with named storms, I'm expecting 14 to 20, hurricanes 7 to 11, and major hurricanes 4 to 7. The funny thing is, is actually uh, this forecast is pretty much on par with what NOAA is calling for now and Colorado State University. So I'm really happy to see that I have agreement from, uh, you know, the, the higher ups. It's really, it's really validating to see that they come into agreement uh, with what I'm saying. And it also raises my confidence, obviously, to see that uh, I'm not the only one calling for this. Really happy to see that this is uh, looking quite possible. Named storms on the lower end there, 14 seems very unlikely to only see 14 because, again, we're already at 9. So that would see, that would mean we would only see 5 more through the rest of the season. I think it's much more possible that we see maybe 18 to 24 named storms. Hurricanes and major hurricanes, you can keep the same way, though. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, are you ready for the cold weather yet or do you want the heat to stick around? And Caden Williams said, I am ready for some colder weather, crisp cool fall nights and bonfires. Whew, I cannot wait for that. Every single year around August, late August, I start getting really, really excited for fall time ever since I was a kid. Uh, and I'm starting to get that feeling again, almost butterflies. I know it's kind of weird, but that's, that's how I get about the weather. Uh, and here for our patron highlight of the day, we've added a few new names. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And of course, Mark J, our diamond patron. Thank you so much for becoming a diamond patron. If you'd like to be featured on the screen, you can become a silver patron or above. Or if you'd like to become a diamond or platinum patron, you can get a shout out for me at the end of each video like Mark J. Uh, you can check that out in the description or pinned comment down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.